It's a lot about letting go of the outcome. Yeah. Because we're saying like make finding a goal your goal because it's not about the goal. It's about who you become because of the goal. And I mean by letting go, like letting go of the outcome is the beginning of 2015 when I was 18 and I felt like, man, it was a pretty hopeless situation. I'd had so many injuries with football, I'd started getting back on top of it. And then I, for no reason, just broke my ankle. Like, First seven minutes. I was seven minutes in the game when I was starting. It was the best I'd ever felt on a field in terms of fitness, mentally as well, and then broke my ankle. Five months on crutches and started to feel started to feel pretty hopeless, but I just kept on working. I got to a couple months where I decided, nah, I wasn't going to play football anymore. Maybe God oh, had steered me in a different direction, but for some reason I kept on working. It's in training. It's in training, and the realisation that I came to was that, explain it like this, I think I told you before a few times. For instance, in a game, say it's a final or whatever, if I, I can do everything right, but there's so many things outside of my control, the air pressure of the ball, the, all the other players in the field, the wind. the wind, the atmosphere in the stadium, anything can change anything by a tiny degree and, and that's what it is, it's an inch whether the ball goes in or not or it hits the post and comes out and you lose the game and all your dreams are gone, like, like it's, it's a matter of an inch and so many things are out of your control when it comes to that. You can only do what you can control and the outcome is not in your control. If you go around just thinking, oh, it has to be this way, you have to hold the outcome in your mind and think, okay, that's what God's gonna give me. But for instance now, so I went from a place where I was, man, I was feeling utterly hopeless and now I'm on the precipice of big words. That was a good word. Of, of stepping into my goal and what I feel like God's called me to do and I have to trust God for the outcome. If that means it doesn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen, you have to deal with that as well. I believe it's going to go a certain way, and I know that it won't go exactly the way that I think, but I believe that God's called me in a certain path, and it's about belief, really. Like, you decide what you want, and then you just believe 100%. And if things change, then you just adjust, you keep adjusting. It's not about, oh, I set a goal and it has to be that way. Because what you believe and what you see changes from minute to minute. Um, because everything changes around you and so many things are outside of your control. So you, all you can do is trust in God and trust mm. that whatever you decide, He's going to help you. And He's going to steer you in the right direction. Mm. And that's hard sometimes. But a lot of the time, even if you set a goal, everything around you is contrary. Everything around you says the opposite. Mm. of what you of what you can see in your mind and so it's a challenge it's it's a real challenge to to keep believing to keep seeing the picture of what you want mm. once you decide and then once you decide not to be a person who is like always changing always flicking from one thing to the other because that can be dangerous if you never focus on one thing you spread yourself out you don't cultivate any power you don't cultivate any energy it doesn't excite you when you wake up in the morning you got to think what could you get up in the morning every single morning and be excited about mm, rub that one. Rub that. <laughs> that's not my <laughs> I... laughing fit everybody not that I could wake up every day and be excited about Rob Bell. I mean, that's what he talks about in his book. <laughs> that's what he talks about in his book, How to Be Here. It's called, we can't, I don't think we can pronounce it properly. Ikagi. Ikagi, like Ikagai, it's like I K I G A I. It's, I think, Japanese. I could be wrong. Yeah, it is. But yeah, it's, it's basically something that you could get up every day and just be excited to do that thing day after day it's after day. It's back to purpose. Like, yeah. You know, purpose and passion, I think, go hand in hand. Peter Daniels says um, purity is inseparably tied to productivity. It's, purity isn't about talking, it's about doing. And it's not about being perfect, it's about... It's about productivity, it's about what you produce for yourself and it's not about the outcome, it's about in, your, in yourself, in your mm. person, who you are. Les Brown, another guy, talks about goals. For instance, now I don't know what will happen. All I can do is believe what God's given me mm. and what I feel and keep going towards that. If God changes the direction, it's only because I've given 100% into what I'm doing. It's created and I've grown and learnt certain things that I needed for something else. Mm -hmm. And football is only a short-term thing anyway, so I believe that, that I'll have a good career. But then that's 10 years, 15 years, maybe 20 years of my life. And then I'll be 40 and hopefully, definitely, be another 60 after that, maybe 61 years after that. And that's a long time, that's more than double, at least double of the time that I've spent here on Earth. So it's not about oh, just attaining that specific goal, it's not about the outcome, it's really about who you become.
And um, <laughs> what would you say if somebody said, I don't know my gifts, how do I find what I'm gifted at doing? It's not about what you're gifted at doing. I don't believe that that comes into it. No, elaborate. So, for instance, there's people, there's a guy I read about, I can't remember his name or anything, which doesn't help with stories, but he was an amazing swimmer, but he hated it. In a few years, he was going to be winning Olympic gold medals, and his parents pushed him, pushed him to do it, yeah. but he hated it. And that's not your ikigi. If you're really good at something, but you hate doing it, no, that's not it. You, you have to yeah. enjoy it, because, I... because when you enjoy something, and when you can put all your energy and all your time into it, that's where you develop skill. Bruce Rawson, they always talk to me about it, it's 1%. One percent. One of one percent is stretching. There's <laughs> a person who is willing to stretch. It's like three minutes, five minutes of your time after a training session, or before you go to sleep, or when you wake up. It's just to stretch. And most people won't do it because they think it won't make a difference. And it's only 1% different. And 1% for you might be just the fact that, okay, now I've watched this and I'm going to think, okay, I'm going to start to have a look at myself. And it's about reflection on mm. on yourself and, and thinking about situations where, okay, you, you feel like you're no good, but maybe that's not the case. Maybe that's just the, the perspective you have of yourself. Or maybe it's some, something that someone told you yeah, and now you believe it. Um, you'd never have to be trapped by the opinions of others or, or what people think of you. This, nice. That was part two of this mini-series. Hope you enjoyed it and check out part three that'll be coming next week. Happy Sunday, guys. See you in my next video.